What's going on everyone? It's Kochi here. So the information for the new Spirit Society summons Night of the Demons uh, was posted last night at Raid Reset and uh, I just wanted to make a video going over their stats and skills and their gameplay and giving you my thoughts and opinions on them. Uh, I'll try to keep this uh, a little quick and concise. So first things first, we will start with Gein. Gein is a speed attribute unit with the Soul Reaper Killer ability. He has a high SP as his most notable uh, stat. And looking at his trait and skills, he has a strong tech recharge 12% uh, soul trait. And his skills are Bruiser 20%, Devastation 40, Sprinter, Frenzy, Debilitator 2 seconds, and Medic. And um, we can also see... Uh, again, shout out to Soldex who data mined this information. Uh, we can see all his um, attack info here. So uh, he's a ranged attacker, we know that. And this is his normal string. It hits a 4 hit string, which is good for ranged characters. His SA1, uh, the collision type is ranged, so it's a projectile type SA1, unfortunately. Um, SA2 is a uh, heal. It's on a 30 second cooldown, it is melee functioning. Um, or yeah, the collision type is melee, and it is also a melee strong attack. It's not a ranged strong attack, so when you look at it that way, he has a longer cooldown um, inherently, because normally this would be a 16 second cooldown, but it's a 30, and it's also melee, so that's one less way for him to guard break. So honestly, I mean, he's a support character, I guess, um, but that's to me, that's kind of a negative. And then his SA3 is a ranged attack, but it has melee collision, uh, which is good. And then his special, uh, everything else is here. It has burn on everything but his SA2. So uh, right as of now, um, it's mostly just his SA1 uh, and SA2. SA1 being ranged, I think it'll be a little bit inconsistent. And then SA2 because it's a melee and also guard breaks melee. That's one less guard break and also the long cooldown. But uh, other than that, uh, let's just look at his gameplay and then uh, I'll give you my opinion on his uh, what that is. Here we go. So that was his gameplay, we'll just mute this and play it back. And uh, first and foremost, let me just say, um, all these characters visually look amazing. I really like this theme of these uh, like um, spirits and like these demonic and like uh, this whole theme that they have for all these characters. I think it's really cool and it's uh, better than most of the other seasonal stuff, so at least to me I find it more interesting. Uh, like demons and ogres and that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, getting into his gameplay. That is his SA3. It looks to be full screen, but I want to stop it right here and just pause it. So you can see it kills this first wave, but then these enemies back here, I don't know why the quality is so bad, but these enemies back here, they don't get hit by it. So I'm a bit concerned if that's not full screen radius and it's actually like 900 AoE. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, but uh, if it is, then that's kind of sucks because seeing that is just uh, dis uh, disconcerting. But uh, other than that, um, his SA2 here is standard like AoE. I think this is like the same AoE for boost as well. So it should be, I think, 525 AoE. So, you know, that's his uh, second strong attack there. And then his first strong attack. Um, you can see it, it's like a projectile that like travels out. It didn't even kill that second enemy there. And uh, it looks, uh, if you have um, Tag Team Ikaku, it feels like it's very similar to his Strong Attack 1. 
Um, it also kind of looks like uh, Hogoku Aizen's SA-1, even though it's not, but it's the same kind of like projectile that travels straight across the ground. It looks kind of narrow as well. I have to mute this. Um, yeah, in these like kind of small like corridors, like, eh, maybe it's okay, but still, the fact that it didn't kill this first enemy, it kills these two. And you can see here, it knocked this dude down, but it didn't kill him, so that's uh, also not uh, very good. But other than that, that was pretty much Gein, uh, everything that I have to say about him. Overall, I think he has a small niche as like a speed healer and frenzy. So uh, for those that need it, he'll be a good support in like modes like uh, Extreme Co-op and Inheritance Zone. However, like if you're just looking at straight up damage, uh, units like Kokuto, they're still like the king when it comes to uh, speed, sorry per killer, uh, as a frenzy unit. But uh, anyway, that's Gein, so we'll move on to the next character now. So the next character we're going to look at is uh, Spirit Society Grimjow. Grimjow is a tech attribute character with uh, pretty high SP, very high SP actually, 774. He has a no affiliation killer, and looking at his soul trait and the skills, he has strong attack uh, damage 20% and his skills are long reach 20%, frenzy, debilitator 5 seconds, bruiser 20%, devastation 40 and sprinter plus 1. And if we pull up the uh, data mined information that Soldex uh, was so kind enough to provide, um, we can look at his uh, attack types or like the collision and everything on his attack information. Everything is melee, thankfully he's a melee character, melee uh, collision type strong attacks. Um, and melee is better than ranged because ranged is usually inconsistent. So everything here looks pretty good, pretty standard stuff. Um, going over his character once again, um, he has very high SP. Like I said, I believe it's tied for the third highest in game, along with Thousand of Blood Warrior Yuruichi and Spirit Rukia, which we'll look at next. Uh, weaken on everything and debilitator is always good with a frenzy character. Um, some negatives though, his no affiliation killer. I've mentioned this killer effect before, that you basically don't have a killer effect, you basically are missing out damage or a lot of content in the game, more so than other characters because there simply isn't that many quests and game types that have these enemies, other than guild quests occasionally and that's like, you know, not all the time and then droplet zone seems like they're putting them in there. The last one, the current one has it and I believe the last one also had no affiliation enemies. So I get that it's going to take time for these enemies and there are going to be more content featuring these enemies, but by the time that happens, uh, these units will probably be outdated, there'll be better units with the killer effect. So it kind of sucks that we get them like this now. Um, but anyway, I've mentioned this a lot of times on uh, other videos as well. And uh, also his sad trait, of course. The other two got a star trait, which is better for friendly characters. But I mean, this is still, you can still work with this uh, soul trait. Uh, but other than that, uh, let's look at his uh, gameplay. And then uh, we'll just go over this. And here we go. So that was his gameplay video and we'll just watch it back. And out of the three of them, I like Grimjaw the most. I think he looks, he just looks insane, honestly. I'm not sure what this floating hand thing is. I don't know if this is like something in like Japanese folklore. Um, but I, I thought they would be a bit bigger, like uh, the size of like like Sajin's uh, Bankai, like when, when he uses his uh, special, I should go back a bit. Uh, Sajin's Bankai, when he uses his special move, he has like his, uh, uh, his Bankai, like the hand is huge, it's like covering the screen. I thought it was going to be something like that, but uh, I don't know, it's interesting. I, I like the design of the character, I think he looks pretty cool. 
So that's his SA3. Uh, looks to be. I'm hoping that's full screen. Yeah, th they look like they were a bit out of range. Yeah, I think it's just the standard full screen. And then his SA. Oh, yeah, it's SA3 again. And his SA2. You can slow that down just a little bit. It's like a little vortex that pulls them in and then explodes. So it's similar to Kokuto's SA3. And it's interesting he has this on his second strong attack. Um, which isn't bad, I think. And then his SA1 is a dash, which is a pretty standard. Uh, a lot of Frenzy characters get a uh, dash or lunging type strong attack. And then his Nad string, I will play this at normal speed. It looks about uh, average. Yeah, it looks about average speed. The The very last hit on his Nad string is a bit slower to come out, so I think that uh, makes the difference between um, being f like actually fast or just above average or not. But uh, overall, uh, Grimjow, I think he has a pretty solid kit with the strong attacks that he was given. Weaken on everything is good. Um, unfortunately, his biggest issue is the killer effect, uh, which, uh, like I said before, it limits the extra damage that he should be getting compared to other units that have more common killer effects, Soul Reaper, Arankar, Hollow. But uh, that's it for Grimjow, so we'll move on to the next unit. So the last character we're going to look at is uh, Spirit Society Rukia. Uh, Rukia is a power attribute character with Arankar Killer. Uh, once again, very high SP. Uh, looking at her soul trait and skills, she has a recharge time soul trait of 12% and her skills are Bruiser 20%, Devastation 40, uh, Weaken Attack, Frenzy, Debilitator 2 seconds, and Sprinter. And if we look at the uh, information posted from the data mine, um, we can see that her attack information here, her, she has a 4 hit nad string first and foremost. Um, she has her SA1 is a ranged type, she is a ranged character with a range collision as well, so that's a bit unfortunate. And uh, we'll look at it in the gameplay, I'll get more into that. Uh, her SA2 is melee collision type, it is a vortex, uh, and then her SA3 is again melee, which is a good thing. Um, and her special as well. Um, she has burn on special, SA3, SA2. She has burn on everything, so which is good with the debilitator. Um, but some positives about Rukia. Um, so like I said, she's a power frenzy character, very high SP. Um, similar to Grimjaw, she's tied for the third highest in game with uh, Thousand Year Blood War Yudoichi as well. Uh, she has a rocker killer. She has a Sar trait, burn on everything, and debilitator, and a four hit nad string, which is also nice. Uh, the strong tech one is range uh, functioning, so I expect a bit of inconsistencies. But um, we'll look at the gameplay and uh, get more into it from there. Let's pause that, and here we go. So that was Rukia's gameplay. I'll just mute it and play it back. So I think it starts with her SA3. Yeah, so her SA3. I don't know if, if I can see it if I slow it down. It, it, it hits up to here as well. I believe you can see it from here. Yeah, it pulls the mobs back. So it's it's similar to like the other um, strong attacks I was talking about earlier, like Kokuto's kind of SA3. It, it pulls, it's a like a mini kind of vortex and then an explosion at the end. So it's a two part uh, strong attack. Uh, if we look at her SA1, or sorry, this is SA2. It's a moving vortex. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not really liking this strong attack and uh, it's similar to um, my criticisms I had for 
uh, Bond Uryu's SA2, which is also was a moving vortex. And the reason being is because if we look at here, uh, both Kaname and Mind Ukiura both have that SA2. It's a moving vortex, but Kaname has Havoc, as does Mind Ukiura. Um, Rukia does not have the Havoc skill. So, which is why her vortex, uh, her vortex AOE, like it's very, very small. It, it looks, it's kind of pathetic looking, I'm not gonna lie. Um, like the actual size of the vortex, like I hate seeing these really small vortexes. Uh, the ones like Kaname and Ukiura have are much nicer because they have that extra AOE from Havoc. But uh, anyway, that's that. And then here's her SA1. You can't see it too well from there, but from here, uh, you can see, uh, I should have paused. From here, you can clearly see it's, it's a split, uh, strong attack. It's three projectiles that fly out in three different directions. Um, it might be a bit deceiving against these like weaker enemies that just die to anything, but definitely in harder content against stronger enemies, um, you know, it's just going to push um, enemies back and they're not going to uh, fully die from it or you need to be really close to get as much damage as you can. So you can expect the inconsistencies. This is very similar to uh, what looks to be Thousand Year Blood War Kisuke's SA1 and you already know people uh, are complaining about that or you know, complain about that and talk about how that's a negative to that character. Um, but uh, yeah, SA1 not looking too good. SA2 kind of a small vortex. I don't like the, like without Havoc, they just look really small. And then SA3 is um, that vortex kind of explosion, uh, strong attack, it's in two parts. I don't know, some people like that, some people don't. Um, and then here's their Nad string. You just need to look at this. So it's a four hit nine string, which is nice. Uh, but I mean, it, it looks about average. There's not really too much to say for nine strings for uh, frenzy units. Because um, you're mostly just going to be spamming their strong attacks, especially if they have star traits. Like, you should always have a strong attack up at that point. Um, I can't really tell if they pierce these projectiles. They just kill them right away, so it's hard to tell. The enemies need to be a bit stronger. Like after it hits them, if it continues to deal damage, it has splash. Like it's hitting this enemy and it connects here as well. So it has a good like um, hit box, I guess. But like after it passes through them, I don't know if it will continue hurting enemies behind or if that's just it like once per attack. But uh, it's really not that important. But anyway, um, Rukia, overall, I think her kit, uh, I think her kit is, I want to say her kit is the weakest. I don't know, it's a toss up between her and Gein, because, uh, Gein has that healing strong attack, which is a melee, um, so one less guard break, longer cooldown. Rukia has a moving vortex. I don't know, I don't think her kit's very strong then. Uh, I can't really say for sure right now, but um, if I'm comparing Gin and Rukia, uh, just objectively from their kits, uh, maybe she's better than Gin because at least she doesn't have a 30 second cooldown strong attack and it's also a ranged, it's another guard break, but I don't think her kit's very strong. Uh, with that SA1, uh, it's pretty bad and SA2 is kind of slow. So uh, she's probably the best ranged Arankar killer. If we look at Arankar killers, this is pretty much it for power. Uh, I'd say she's probably better than Soliphone, but um, uh, yeah, other than that, it's really not much to say about her. Um, so that's pretty much it for this uh, banner. The fillers are here, so some other stuff in the news. The fillers in the pool, these are pretty good for me. And then, you know, metal exchange character, character packs, and then there's a ticket as well with the following units in the ticket pool. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this analysis video for these characters. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative and maybe um, changed your opinions or you know maybe reinforced some existing opinions you had on these characters. But um, hopefully you found it helpful. And if you are summoning on this banner uh, later at Raid Reset, um, later tonight, 
then uh, I wish you the best of luck. I hope you get the characters you're going after. But uh, other than that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you all later.